An 11 mile stretch of land underdeveloped but full of possibility. That is the target for parks and people that want to honor the Baltimore Black Sox and Negro League Baseball history. From Port Covington to Westport to Cherry Hill to Middle Branch, an 11 mile hike and bike trail, but complete with exhibits as well to honor this incredible history from a century ago. We envision a, a mock dugout that would have existed in the early 1900s. We envision, and not to scale, but a smaller version of the uh, stadium in which they played in the early 1900s. Dr. Frank Lance, CEO of Parks and People, glows at the possibilities. Nearly a dozen interactive exhibits, ideally one each unveiled annually starting in 2025. There are some great trails in the Baltimore, Washington metropolitan area, and we want one in Baltimore to rival those. We really see it as a place where people of multiple generations, multiple races, multiple backgrounds will come and gather together because the outdoors is that true gathering place. And if we do this right, this becomes the green gathering place like Harbor Place was a commercial gathering place 40 years ago. So the plan is to honor the Baltimore Black Sox, but why the Black Sox? Why them? What is special about this team in Baltimore's history? Let's say uh, there are a lot of reasons and they're all very good. They were an astonishing collection of baseball talent. The Baltimore Black Sox, loaded with talent like Hall of Famers Judd Wilson, Satchel Paige, legends like Oliver Ghost Marcel. The Black Sox played in Baltimore from 1913 through 1936. Baltimore native Dr. Bernard McKenna, an English professor at the University of Delaware, wrote the definitive history of the Black Sox and will consult on the project. The 1929 and the 1930 teams have been described by critics other than me, people who know baseball better than I do, and I love baseball, as some of the best teams in Major League history. In 1930, the Black Sox repeatedly beat a collection of white Major League All-Stars, including Hack Wilson. Baltimore Sun reporter C.M. Gibbs wrote that he, this is the quote, didn't know whether the All-Stars are convinced that they can't beat the Black Sox, but everybody else is. 10 game series, Black Sox won eight, lost one, the other was called for darkness. More than a baseball team, the Black Sox drew crowds of black and white fans. They sat side by side. Winning would bring the whole of Baltimore together at least a few hours at a time. Baseball was a haven, even though the rest of the city was filled with racial hate. What we found historically is that the local newspapers, both the quote unquote black newspaper, the Afro, and the two white newspapers, the Baltimore Sun and the Baltimore American, covered the Baltimore Black Sox. So with a multimodal trail and interactive exhibits winding through traditionally African-American communities, the history of the Baltimore Black Sox and what the team meant to our community earns a renaissance. What if we're able to let people know that in the early 1900s, both races, in, 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 at, at the height of Jim Crow, at the height of separate but equal, both races came together over baseball. What brought them together? Baseball. If we're able to pull that off, I think that that's a huge win for Baltimore, and that's one of the things we're trying to do. Pete Gilbert, WBAL, TV 11 Sports. Nice work, Pete. The uh, Parks and People Foundation isn't doing this alone. It's working with the South Baltimore Gateway Partnership and the Mayor's Office as well. And as Pete mentioned, they hope to unveil their first exhibit by 2025.